using building thinking classrooms and still struggling to feel comfortable building some lessons. I'm Aaron Hayes. My goal here at Hayes' World of Math and at West Chicago Community High School is to help you kind of get that confidence. And so what I want to do is I'm going to walk through how I went through and built this lesson for solving radical equations for my Algebra 2 class. And as I was doing it, I was trying to think of how can I make this a little bit more, I guess, catchy would be the thing. And I came up with this three-word phrase. As I was building stuff, I was thinking about, okay, what can and could and should? And that's all about where your students are. So I would say the first thing is, what can your students do currently? Where can you start them at? And then what could they do if you gave them a push? Or if you built it up, scaffolded it up slowly enough that they can be like, wait a second, this isn't that hard. So they can focus more on their technique with the goal, of course, end goal in mind, because as we learned in the early 2000s, start with the end in mind, building by design, understanding by design, et cetera. And then what should your students be doing by the end of this? Okay, so for us, for building, for solving radical equations, the place that we usually tend to teach to is here on our focus level. Solve equations that include multiple radicals. All right, which means that we need to start here and solve equations that include single radicals. That's our basic level. Some algebra programs have done that, ours doesn't, but that's a place to start. So then the question is, okay, so if I'm looking for, well, first of all, this is where we're going to go. Do this, you hit the focus level in our class, Bs are no problem, away you go. Right? So this is kind of where I want things to eventually end up. Probably in something like this, which is a totally new topic, probably end of day two. But let's see where students should be able to start. So again, I'm thinking where can students start, so I'm going to start them here. So this is kind of in our can group. Square root of x is equal to 9. Go. Within, with a group of two to three kids, they should be able to get this, or at least look around, see everybody squaring things, and away they go. So they square both sides. Hey. Okay, square both sides. So again, you're building technique first. I always try to tell my students that if, if the math seems too simple, then focus on the technique, because then that way, when the math gets hard, you don't have to focus on the technique. So over here, same problem. A little bit more involved because there's going to be more to do, but again, they're just squaring both sides. So then they're going to end up with x minus 3 is equal to 64. They've got one other step, but again, they're in a group. They have no problem. They're just still squaring both sides. Life seems pretty good. Now, this one technically would be a focus level, but again, it seemed to be kind of, well, what happens if we do on both sides? The part that my students always forget is they forget to square this whole thing. I see a lot of 5 times 2 here instead of 25 times 2. So just word of warning. But again, students can focus on the technique, and they're just squaring both sides, and then they're solving whatever the resulting equation is. So that's going to continue. So I would say this, up until here, these are all probably can't. Okay. Up over here, it's kind of a bridge between the two. Um, for some of my students, it's kind of now in the could range. Okay? So now again, you're focusing, well, what did you do before? Oh, I squared both sides. We'll do the same thing. You're, and again, it's reinforcing all sorts of good stuff. But again, that's not really all that outside of what we're asking them to do. Okay? Go on. I'm going to get this. So now we're getting into kind of the bulk of it, okay? This is, again, in that could range where simplify, put everything on one side. Isolate the radical. And again, that's not going to take a lot because once you get it to this point, hopefully somebody in the group feels comfortable enough with the other one that they can help the other people just do what you did on this problem. But notice what we've done. Our goal here was to get kids to here. And in the matter of one, two, three, four, five, five problems, we're very close to that. One, and there's the last one that I would end up usually rabbit ending on the day. We may or may not even talk through this. I would just sometimes say, okay, and this is where we're planning on going. But now before we get there, I want you guys to be able to feel comfortable and practice on problems like this. And this is what the homework would be about. 
And then the next day, we would kind of take the next couple of steps. Regroup, do the learning card probably, so they've got a chance to kind of assimilate it, so it makes a little bit more sense instead of just copying down words onto a page. Um, and then from there, that's how I kind of go through and do my lessons. So hopefully you find that helpful. I will continue to try to do these as chance allows. Um, if you have any questions, obviously throw them down below. I'll try to put in either the first pinned comment or in the description a link to a couple of other things that hopefully you will find helpful. And I will see you soon.